Hey art nerds, so today I have a really special treat. My watercolors from Bean Paints finally arrived and I am super excited to share this palette with you guys today. So let's go ahead, unbox it, and swatch it. It's arrived in a recyclable cardboard envelope with a handy pull tab. And inside we have our paints in a beautiful custom stamped travel bag. It looks like it's cotton. And we also have our receipt, which I appreciate. And I ordered the starter palette mixing set, which is beautifully wrapped. All right, so in our package, we have these beautifully wrapped paints, and I believe they've also included an oil cloth or a wax cloth to help keep your paints from getting all over everything. So these are paint stones. They are handmade, light, fast, artist quality pigment. This is the mixing set of six, and they say, be safe, don't eat the paint, which is truly words of wisdom. No sarcasm there. We have here, oh, how nice, a little bonus, a couple of the paint dots that we can try in some beautiful colors, very bright colors. And then we also have a little thank you note. Thank you for supporting Indigenous Family Business. The paints you've just purchased are made with local Manitolian honey, wildcrafted tree sap, hand gathered washed and sifted manitolian stone and the finest light fast pigments we strive to be a plastic free company and we make all our packaging either hand cut and sanded reclaimed white cedar and birch or wrappers hand printed in shop with plant-based inks and wax with local beeswax use the code for 10 percent off your next order and to see our process and mini tutorials how cool is that instagram at beam paint and beam paints.com and I'll have links to all this down in des the description below and Instagram is how I found out about bean paints I have been internet stalking them for a while these paints are quite popular and the smaller sets sell out very very quickly let's go ahead and get to unwrapping I really love how they've managed to be a very low waste company we're not dealing with a bunch of plastic and foil Ooh, okay. All right. It's going to be a challenge for me to get this back in, but inside we have six individual paint stones and that is what they call their, these aren't really half pans. They're more like paint stones indeed. And they've been wrapped in canvas, so they don't use any plastic whatsoever. Sixty for this six paint stone starter set and it should have three of the two different types of primary colors so we should have a warm red yellow blue cool red yellow blue and the colors in this set are great ocean summer sun red fall poplar yellow prussian magenta and blueberry mountain Beam paint stones use light fast pigments, tree sap, Manitolian honey, and gum arabic. So one of the real joys of reviewing handmade watercolors is the ability to support small businesses, to support other people's dreams, and to be able to promote someone who's just as small or smaller than I am. Sometimes though, I do get to promote people who are a little bit bigger as well. In the case with bean paints, they are, as I said, quite popular and already have a very good reputation. Not only do they offer Basically, these are a lot like half pans. Bean Paint says these are their answer to half pans. They offer sort of solid watercolor. They also offer liquid watercolor and they offer gouache as well. And they've recently started making sets that are intended for children to be able to use as well. I was very tempted to go with the kids set because it had lots of bright, 
beautiful colors, but I wanted to be able to review these as professional grade watercolors and I wasn't sure if the kids set was designed to be more washable or designed to maybe include fewer toxic pigments. So I figured the best way to give a fair review of bean paints would be to go with their professional grade starter palette. Since one of the joys of reviewing handmade small business watercolors like these is being able to support and promote a small business, let me tell you guys a little bit about Bean Paints. This information comes from their website and I'm going to go ahead and read it to you, although I'll also link it down in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. Bean Paints is the result of a multi-generational love of pigment, paint, color, and innovation. I was raised by my artist's parents, Carl Beam and Anne Beam, and was taught from a young age how to harvest hematite pigment in the LaCloche mountain range near our home in Michigan First Nation on Manitolian Island. Bean Paints draws on my early educations in indigenous pigment and expands it to encompass all paint traditions. A focus on high quality pigment content creates sublime artist materials with plastic free packaging. Click on any one of these articles to find out more. And there's more information in the Foundry Home Goods as well as a Gathering Color article in Snaplines Summer 2019 Online Digest. Lightfast pigments, tree sap, gum arabic, and Manitolian honey blend together to create a handmade saturated color that is a pure that is a joy to paint with. From thick stripes to fine washes and details, quality is evident in every stroke. Our hand our watercolors are shaped into paint stones, our version of a half pan before being wrapped in beeswaxed canvas. Our paints are packaged in slices of cedar and birch offcuts from an indigenous sustainable lumber operation. Now, if you started a palette like I have here and you fall in love and you want to be able to buy more of their paint stones, you can order them online individually at $12.50 each. You can also purchase empty cedar or poplar slices to house your palette if you wish. And they also sell larger wax cloths as well as the paint rolls. So you can expand your watercolor collection, which is really nice to see. And it allows artists to be able to continue to support beam paints as their needs and their collection grows. So for the swatching portion of our unbox and swatch, I would have loved to have used a Canadian or American handmade watercolor paper, but unfortunately I don't have any of those, but I do have some handmade Shizen watercolor paper. This is their cold press paper, so I think it'll do quite well for swatching our handmade beam paper. Dive too deep into swatching. I want to go ahead and pre-activate these watercolor stones with just a little bit of water. Give that honey a chance to kind of soak it up and let those pigments activate. And I also wanted to go over with you guys what I'm looking for when I review watercolors. And I also want to kind of talk to you guys about my stance on reviewing homemade, handmade, and small business watercolors. Review handmade watercolors. I typically review them on a slightly different scale than on mass produced, professionally made watercolors in a large scale operation. I'm a little more lenient with handmade watercolors, partially because I know it's an individual or at most a family working together to make these things. This is somebody's actual livelihood. This isn't a large scale business. So if I have problems with a watercolor, generally I, I won't release the review or I will notify the manufacturer, the person who makes the watercolors and point out my concerns. There have been a few exceptions to that rule, but in general, if I don't like the watercolors, you guys will never see the review. Secondly, 
since it is a small business, I don't necessarily expect the performance that I might expect from a professionally made mass produced watercolor because they don't necessarily have access to the kind of machinery that would get you the kind of results that say Da Vinci watercolors might offer. I'm delighted when someone is able to do that. For example, the black sheep watercolors really had me impressed, but I don't hold them necessarily to the same standards as mass produced watercolors. So just wanted to lay that out there for you guys. You guys might notice some stuff that you might say, oh, this won't really work for me and that's fine, but I'm not really looking to tear anybody up when I'm reviewing handmade watercolors. As I'm swatching these watercolors, I'm looking at opacity. It's okay if some of the colors are opaque, but since these are watercolors and not their gouache, I want the majority of the colors to be at least semi-transparent. I'm looking for how quickly and how easily these activate and we can get the pigments moving. Um, for example, Viridian greens are not the best at activation, so I'm looking to avoid that kind of paint. Once they've dried, I'm looking for liftability. How easily do these watercolors lift up off the page with a little bit of scrubbing? That's gonna tell me whether these watercolors are likely to turn to mud if I do a lot of layers. And in the case with the Jasper Stardust watercolors, it's gonna tell me if the watercolors are just gonna kind of flake off the paper on their own. I'm looking at granulation. While I want some of the colors to be granulating, I don't want all of the colors to be super granulating. And I like seeing a variety of granulation in watercolors. So I don't want everything super finely milled and I don't want everything super coarsely milled. And then finally, I'm looking for washout. We're gonna do a mass tone swatch and we're also gonna do a washed out swatch. So I'm looking for how well they wash out, how easily the color moves, that sort of thing. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any handmade watercolor brushes, so I'm going to be using a synthetic flat cotton brush for today's swatches and for today's lift test. I also have a cup of clean water, and since we're only swatching six colors, I will just go ahead and do it live for y'all. Now, unfortunately, with this palette mixing set, they didn't include any information as to which colors are which. Looking at their site more closely, I actually realized that their primary trio includes some different colors than their mixing six set. So in the primary trio, they include a blue called Almost Night. That's not included in this six set, but two of the colors are the same. So this would be Summer Sun Red. This would be Poplar Yellow. And I am assuming that this would probably be Great Ocean, but unfortunately they didn't include any documentation or labeling as to which paints are which, which is a little bit frustrating. Some swatches with the names labeled on it would make it easy if I fell in love with a color and I want to reorder. These over here are magenta. So I thought there would be two yellows in here. I guess that isn't a yellow. Uh, it would be magenta, Prussian, and maybe blueberry mountain, or this one might be blueberry mountain. Honestly, I do wish they'd labeled them because it would make figuring out which colors are which a lot easier, but it does seem like this set has three blues to it. I'm going to start with my mass tone. And then I'm gonna do my wash. And halfway through, I blend it out with water just to see if we can get any color movement, any granulation that might not be apparent in our full saturation swatch. Next, I'm gonna do magenta. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of pigment information available on the site. Certainly not with this particular listing. I'm gonna dig around and see if I can find that and link it for you guys and include it in the show notes down below. This would be fall poplar yellow. Now I know some companies, some manufacturers, some people who make paints don't like disclosing the pigments that they use because they don't want someone copying their formulation. 
but as somebody who reviews art supplies, it is, ooh, that's a purple. That is not playing around. I like that purple. That's another thing, is on the site, they don't include swatches with the listing of the colors. So I had no idea. At, at first I thought that might even be a yellow. That's mass tone is just very dark. Because generally with mixing sets, you get two yellows, two blues, two reds. Not with this one. So that is something to perhaps consider for the site is even for the palettes include swatches of the colors or labeled swatches of the colors. So I know this is a Prussian. The problem is I don't know if this is Blueberry Mountain and this is Great Ocean or if this is Great Ocean and this is Blueberry Mountain. This kind of dioxinesque purple though does remind me of crushed blueberries so I'm guessing that's Blueberry Mountain. I found all of the colors activated very easily. I didn't have to do any scrubbing to pick up color. I was able to pick up color just by very gently dabbing my brush onto the paint stone. So that's great. It also seems like none of these colors are particularly opaque, which in my opinion for watercolor is also great. If I want opacity, I'm gonna buy gouache. So sometimes with watercolor, for us to be able to see if there's granulation, we have to wait until the water has evaporated or sunken into the paper. And that way the, the particles, the pigment particles can actually kind of fall down and hit the valleys and the peaks of the watercolor paper. So we need to let this dry before I can tell you guys about granulation. We also need to let this dry completely before I can tell you guys about liftability. Now the washout, we did get some really nice blends, some nice gradients with the washes, and all of the colors seem to be fairly saturated, but that's another thing that we're gonna really be able to judge best once it's had a chance to dry. these haven't quite dried fully yet. I did notice that the opacity decreases quite a bit as they dry and I'm not sure if it's the Shizen or if it's the paints. So to be absolutely fair, I'm going to re-swatch these on the Baohang Academy cotton rag watercolor paper because sometimes with Shizen, Shizen, if you grab the wrong side of it and it doesn't let you know which side is which, the colors turn out kind of funky. So I definitely want to be as fair as possible. I'm going to do the re-swatch in time. It took forever for these to dry, but they finally did dry. And I'm really glad I re-swatched these on the Baohang Academy because I probably used the wrong side of this. As you can see, it doesn't actually say which side is which. And while I try to be mindful when I'm putting it away, ugh, mistakes do happen and I have painted on the wrong side before. So what I would actually like to do, if you guys would ever so indulge me, is I'm actually gonna re-swatch them on the correct side in time-lapse, but you know, to save everybody some time, I am gonna go ahead and 
I think, do the color mixing stuff on here. And that way, save me some time is, is what it is. So the swatches for this side, I'll edit that in. And that's how the magic happens. So these are all still pretty activated. And this is a mixing set, so we do want to actually test how well these colors are able to mix. So we're going to do two different types of color mixing. We're going to do optical blending, where we apply a layer of color and then we do a stripe on top of it and see what we get. And we're going to do manual mixing, where we actually mix the two colors together and then apply that. flip it since it's still drying over there but it actually seems like I was on the correct side to begin with and that these paints on this paper are not necessarily the best fit hey that happens sometimes I'm so glad I also swatched on this paper since this is a better reflection I believe of the colors in this palette our first line for the plaids has had a chance to dry let's go back over them and uh, create our grid. One of the pros about doing a color mixing test like this is it allows me to test the glazing properties of the watercolor as well. How do they layer color on top of color? We do see some color reactivation. I did try to let them dry as much as possible. It is kind of a humid day today, so the dry times have been a little bit long, but I did let them dry as much as possible. And we do see some color migration. So if you paint teeny tiny things and you like to do loads of glazes, these might not be the best fit for you. We can also see some granulation, although maybe not as much as I'd like to see. And some of the colors are a little bit opaque, which is fine. I mean, when it comes to watercolor, you are gonna have some transparent, some semi-transparent, some semi-opaque and some opaque watercolors. So some opacity is okay, you just don't want every color to be opaque. So next, let's do the manual mixing test. So we don't have a whole lot of room for manual color mixing on here. I am gonna try to do a few though, and I'm going to just go ahead and mix the colors on my silicone impermeated craft sheet. So unfortunately, slightly off camera for y'all, but bear with me. So we are starting with that poplar yellow adding in a little bit of, oh, I said a little, but it ended up being a lot, adding in some red. We're going for an orange here. We wanna see how clean an orange we can get. Now I'm gonna try that same yellow and mix it in with a little bit of magenta. So the thing about a mixing palette is that theoretically, you should be able to mix most colors that you're gonna need. And I do think the inclusion of a purple instead of two yellows is a good move because it's very difficult to mix a good purple. In fact, I'll demonstrate with the magenta and the warmer of our blues. You can mix a purple, as you'll see here. That's the magenta and the blue together, but it's never gonna be the same as a pre-mixed dioxine style purple. Let's try mixing up a green, ooh, using the Prussian blue. Get a very nice green with that. And how about a green with our almost ultramarine? 
a nice olive green. That's what we want to see. And then we have this purple. I'd like to mix a brown. So I'm going to do red and yellow. I'm going to add a little more yellow to my cool red mix. Grab a little bit of purple. And let's see what kind of brown we can get. A little bit challenging to mix a good brown with this one. I adjusted the mixture a little bit. So we do get a brown, but you may want to purchase some earth pigments to get those really nice browns. Regarding color mixing just in general, you can glaze color for optical blending, although there was some reactivation, and I did try to let it dry as much as possible. This might be an issue if you're applying a toning glaze after the base paint colors have been painted, in, like if you're trying to adjust the colors of your illustration, or if you're trying to adjust it in process. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Although some of these are really beautiful and you get some really luminous colors. So that, there's definitely some pros there. And I kind of look forward to, I'm, I'm tempted because I haven't decided yet if I want to do my field test in house, like I normally do, or if I want to take these out in the field and do some field painting with them. Maybe I'll do a little A, a little B. You guys will have to let me know what you want to see. But this is designed to be more of a travel palette, which is one of the reasons I'm like, oh, I could take it with me. So it is challenging for me to mix a good strong orange. I wasn't really sure why because the materials for a good orange are there. And it's challenging to mix a brown because if you can't get a good orange, it's harder to get a good brown because usually you can mix a good brown using yellow, red, and a little bit of purple. This is what I was able to get. So I would recommend ordering some earth pigment pigment stones to add to your palette and that's going to make it a lot easier to mix those kind of colors. I do like the inclusion of a purple as a good strong purple is actually very difficult to mix. The ultramarine ask I, I know it's not called ultramarine but it, it it's pretty ultramarine. The ultramarine esque and magenta also make a really nice purple. And it's very easy to mix some lovely greens with the included colors. So I did a green with yellow and Prussian and a green with the yellow and the almost ultramarine blue. So I wanted to go ahead and swatch the samples they sent. I think these are gouache. They didn't really provide a lot of information about this and I actually can't read what that says. We made your paints fresh and I think this is when they made them. So that's cool, but I'm gonna swatch these and I'm actually just gonna swatch them right here and right here. Start, I'm just gonna activate them a little bit. I don't wanna saturate them too much just to give them a chance to soak up some water so we can get some nice strong color. Ah, the magic of YouTube. I had it paused for a couple of minutes, but for y'all, it seemed like nothing. Something else is I wish they labeled what colors these are, because these are really beautiful colors. And I would, you know, be interested in adding them to my collection, but I don't know what they are. Oh yes, they are beautiful colors. That's such a shame. <laughs> they would go so well in the Naomi palette. and. I kind of retract what I said now that I'm looking at them. They look like they could also be used like watercolor, maybe semi-opaque watercolor, which is honestly my favorite kinds of gouaches. You can, you're more flexible and you can use them as watercolor if you wish. So I like to see that. That's a good sign and I love those. These have finally dried enough that we can attempt the lift test. You don't want to do it while it's wet because that's not very fair. So I'm not really going to scrub. I'm just going to lightly go over it a couple of times and then dab it up. And that gives me an idea as to how well these will work in layer applications, which if you guys look at my art, you'll know I do a lot of layers when I do watercolor. And if you've never checked out my art before, it would really mean a lot to me if you headed on over to Instagram.com slash Soup. And I often share sneak peeks of what's going on on the channel over there if you're interested or you can check out my watercolor webcomic 7 inch Kara at 7inchkara.com so that's what got me in whoa very lifting that's what got me into watercolor in the first place and when I'm reviewing watercolor in general it's kind of with that eye 
for the kind of painting that I do when I'm working on Kara. So yeah, some of these are kind of lifting. The red, this ultramarine-esque blue and this Prussian blue are all pretty lifting with the ultramarine-esque blue being the most lifting. The yellow and the purple, which I think is Blueberry Mountain, are both fairly staining and not necessarily prone to lifting. Pigment information doesn't seem to be listed anywhere on the stones or the package that came to me in the mail. I was able to find it online. So I'm gonna share that with you guys. And I also have all their paint stones linked in the description. And if you check that page, it has the pigment information. Now, something I actually really like, something I think that's really cool, is that they include the indigenous words for these words. Now, my pronunciation, even of English, is not the best. So I'm not going to attempt to pronounce any of it here mainly because I don't want to accidentally say something that might be insulting because I have terrible pronunciation, but I will have that in the description as well. I think that's super cool and I think you guys should definitely check it out. So Summer Sun Red is PR 170. Cherry Magenta is PR 122. Fall Poplar Yellow is PY 74. Blueberry Mountain is PV 23. Great Ocean is PB29, and Prussian is PB27. I wanted to see how easy it is to refold the beautiful printed wax wrap that they've included. This is the palette. You can get the wraps where it holds it, like a, like a cinnamon roll almost, which are really cute. Or you can also get the slices of birch, which are also really cool. This is a good fit for me, and it seems like a good fit for travel watercolors. Now, these are going to be waterproof, but I'm a little weird, and I don't want to get my paint everywhere, so I wanted to wait until these were mostly dry. I'm also very impressed because these are made with waxed canvas or waxed fabric, and uh, then there's like a small belly band of the same around it, and they have done an excellent job of containing the paint even though I got a lot of water on them not leaking not making a mess and it's a beautiful thing to see because you don't have to use plastic that is so cool so we're gonna try rewrapping it they didn't include instructions and I am not exactly great at rewrap uh, refolding maps but you know what I mean, I might have like a hair elastic or a bow or something to keep this shut, but dang it, that was easy. So as with every watercolor review, I wanna share my pros and cons for the beam paints. So the pros, they are handmade. They are a very small business owned and operated by an indigenous family in Canada, which is very cool. The paints themselves and their packaging is lovely. You can tell a lot of love, pride, and care goes into their watercolors and the packaging that accompanies it. And I love seeing that from small businesses. A huge plus is also no plastic. I don't have to feel bad about all the waste I generated from reviewing these because there was very little waste. That's amazing. The colors don't turn soupy and I was able to rewrap them pretty quickly. If you are painting outside on a warm summer day where the humidity isn't bonkers high, you would be able to do this without a problem. And it, they are quick to activate and they do deliver a lot of color. So the cons. They're a little bit expensive, but with the above taken into consideration, I would say they are well worth it. It's a little challenging to mix oranges and browns with this selection, so I would need a few more paint stones to make a set I could easily paint with, but that's not really that much of a con. I usually end up, before the field test, I do usually end up ordering a few more paints here and there, so I'm kind of used to that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the site does give pigment information about these, but I wish they would include the pigment information with the set because that's gonna make it a lot easier to give it as a gift. So my advice to Beam, please label your paints or include something with the paints labeled, a swatch sheet with a little bit of the color and then the name of the paints would not only be beautiful and very welcome, but I'm sure people would hold on to it and use it as a palette map. 
So that actually, let me show you guys an example of that. So these are the Letter Sparrow handmade paints like this. Something like this. It's beautiful. It's useful. It, le it lets you know what paints are which. It's not something I would just toss into the trash. So something like this with this would be super helpful. I loved this little sample and I'd love to order these colors. They're so beautiful and vibrant, but I don't know what they are. So information, just the color names would make it easy for people who have fallen in love with the colors that you've included as a sample to turn around and be able to order those. And I would love some pigment information, even background information with the paints themselves because it makes giving these as a gift an absolute delight and you could spark an interest in handmade watercolors for a new artist. about wraps up my review of the beautiful handmade bean paints paint stones. I can see why they're so popular. If you're an artist who's passionate about handmade watercolors, who enjoys supporting small businesses, and you don't want to contribute more plastic waste to the environment, supporting bean paints is a wonderful way to achieve all of those goals. I can't wait to field test these. I think I'm going to order a couple more paint stones, a couple browns just to round out the palette, make it a little bit easier for me as a painter so I'm not spending a lot of time mixing. But in general, I think it's a really cool product by a really cool small company. And if you haven't checked out Bean Paints, I hope this review will convince you to give them a shot. They do have dot cards, so if you don't want to spend $60 on a you know, introductory palette to figure out if you like them, I think the, the dot cards, which seem to include a generous amount of paint, are an excellent way to experiment with these handmade watercolors. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this review was helpful, useful, and informative. If you guys enjoy my content, give me a big old thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comments below. Let me know what other watercolors you'd like to see me try out. or. Are you interested in learning how to make your own watercolors and do you want to do you want to make that commitment with me because I'm kind of interested I'm increasingly interested in learning how to make my own watercolors especially as I try out different brands of handmade watercolors. So if you would like to support the channel I would love it if you stuck around you click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so YouTube hopefully lets you know when my channel updates. If you'd like to suggest content, join me over on The Paint Box, my art-centric Discord server. I'll pop a link to that down in the description below for you guys. I'd love to hang out and chat with y'all. And if you'd like to help support the channel in a financial way because this was not sent to me, this is not a sponsored video, this was purchased out of pocket, you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. And not only will you get early access to reviews like this one, you'll get free downloadable printable line arts for you to color along with my many tutorials. In fact, I am increasingly moving my tutorials over to Patreon and no longer sharing them for free on YouTube. So if you enjoy my tutorials and you enjoy hanging out and learning from me, Supporting me on Patreon is a great way to do that. So I really enjoyed trying these out. I look forward to field testing them with you guys. I'm still trying to decide if it's going to be an in-house field test or if we're going to go out and do some plein air painting. Might be a little egg. 
a little bee. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And I hope you guys will join me for that one as well. So I hope y'all have a wonderful day. I hope to see you guys again soon, maybe during one of my live streams. And hopefully I'll hear from you guys over on Discord. So with that, let's say goodbye.